Welcome back to Three for the Money. If you have not yet opted in for our code, I'm, I'm here to tell you you still can using the code MONEY3. That's M-O-N-E-Y 3. When you use the code MONEY3 on the Action 24-7 Sportsbook, you will receive a $250 risk-free bet on your first bet. New customers only. Terms and conditions apply. Let's get to it. here we're back it's three for the money new episodes every friday and we got a new set yep yep we did yep oh <laughs> that's what's different i thought yeah. you got a haircut no ah. I, I need one of those i knew but. it was something <laughs> <laughs> something was afoot something was wrong here. um hopefully this will cut down on my editing time for the show and i can do some more things for the show and yeah, so well, let's get into it. Um, let's do it. How, how we doing, boys? Ha, so I'm so happy. Yeah, it's conference championship week. Yeah, it's my favorite week of the year. <laughs> There's just basketball all the time. It's the best. Literally like 12 hours of basketball every day. Yeah. For like a month. Mm -hmm. It's it's like Christmas, but for a month. It's the best time of the year. It is. <laughs> You just gamble all day responsibly. <laughs> you call in sick to work. You can. Sick. And just say that, oh, I threw up. Oh, I don't <laughs> think I can make it. Turn what are they going to do? Just say, no, you just, didn't? Just turn on the old um, oxygen channel or whatever. What What's the channel that has, what's the like out-of-pocket channel that has like, well, right now, USA, the, and like, USA has the A-10 tournament. Yeah. And then once uh, the actual, the regular tournament comes back in uh, True TV. True TV, that's what I'm Which is about. like. It, like, I'm kind of excited to watch something on True TV that isn't Impractical Jokers. Well, see, that's awesome. You get the you get to watch basketball all day. And then, and then it goes then straight into Impractical Jokers. At like Jokers. 1130, it's like <laughs> a four-hour block <laughs> of Impractical Jokers. Like, I mean. Yeah. No, it's I great. don't know what heaven's like, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but imagine, I think it's pretty damn close. I imagine that's a part of it. <laughs> it's it better be a big part. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have some questions. I know that, like, if I'm you know watching college basketball for an extended period of time on True TV, uh, I'm actually kind of sick of Impractical Jokers because they're just gonna be running the same commercials. Just over commercials and over again. for, or yeah. it's them and what other like shitty tv show they have yeah is that one like magic show still on i don't know and then there's i don't remember yeah <laughs> it's they just have impractical jokers they're like, really what more else true like, tv what else do you need? true tv is kind of like mtv where they just like they only have impractical jokers where mtv only has ridiculousness do you remember what true tv what used to be before no. it was no. like <laughs> it was like forensic files and like stuff like that oh and like crime shows, hmm. it used to be like Court TV or something like oh. that. I think it was what it was called hmm. back in the day. Hmm. It had like world, like wildest police chases. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it did have and like and like it had like yeah. world's craziest, yeah, stuff. world's it's, wildest craziest fill in the blank. Yeah, that yeah. was probably back when like Spike TV was a big competitor with them. Though. Yeah, probably. cops was on, dude, twenty four hours a day. Bring back cops, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know let's if that's stop talking about is that TV. controversial? <laughs> <laughs> we can stop talking about television programs, but just I could do an hour on that. Yeah, <laughs> I could, I could, but no, but yeah, it's not why, not why we're here. Not, not exactly, but well, how yeah, did basketball <laughs> games on true TV. <laughs> oh yeah, USA and all the others. Yeah. <laughs> so how are you? How are you doing this week, Chris? Um. I had a very good – my birthday was on Monday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, birthday to Chris. I appreciate 26 it. 26 years old. 27. 27 years old. Uh. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, I went 7-0 to on my birthday. That's and birthday like, magic. what else oh, man, What else could you ask for? Yeah. You can't. You, nothing. 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 Uh, thanks for the socks, Mom, but I'll take 7-0. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, and then yesterday, eh, it was pretty shitty, but I went to bed. I was 
even. I was like four and four, I think, even when I went to bed because like Long Beach and what other other West Coast game I bet on tipped off at like 11. Hmm. I, I get sleepy. So uh, I woke up and I was like, okay, maybe if both those won, I'll be plus money or if I'll take even. I woke up, I had an under or I had an over. It um, went, it was Montana State and Weber State over. I forget what the number was. Went to double overtime. Didn't even come close. Wow. It was wow. at least like 10, 15 points off. Wow. Double overtime. It was like 122. It was like an, like 150 or some absurd number. As famously said by you, overtime is where unders go to die. Uh, which is this one, crazy. Like, yeah. It went the final, I think, after regulation, it was like 48 to 48. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. That's gross. And then I had Long Beach minus nine. They got beat by 20. So, yeah. Tuesday wasn't good, but hey, I went 7 0 on Monday. So, that's what's up. That's all that matters. You can't, you can't hurt me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am invincible. Unless I go 0 and 7, that'd be bad. But. <laughs> that would hurt me. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would hurt. Which brings me to how I was doing. Oh. Um, I was hot mm-hmm. all weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Mm-hmm. I was like, I believe I went. Seventeen and five in those three days. Yeah. Wow. And then Sunday morning comes around, and I'm like, okay, time to bet the early slate because I'm I'm revved up and I'm hot <laughs> right now. Uh, oh and six, didn't win a bet all Sunday, <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, this sucks. <laughs> oh and bad. six, I didn't win a single bet. That's Statistically, tough. though, like if you have – that is just about on par as going 7-0. It's honest it, – it's – I don't know. It's it's difficult, yeah. It's I was going to say it's harder, but I don't know. I don't know the numbers. I don't know if it's harder. but I haven't, yeah, I haven't crunched the numbers. Yeah. Um, it's very it's very hard to go 0-6 because you yeah. think you'd win at least one. I mean, odds are you're yeah. one. <laughs> you get one. <laughs> you have a one in six chance of getting – one off of a basically because they were just spreads and totals yeah, so it wasn't anything. off of basically a 50 50 shot at either side. That's rough. Mm-hmm. I just, I was just flipping the wrong side of the coin every, every time. single time. It's the way she goes. Yep. Just before we get into Will's, how Will's been doing, uh, you said overtime is where dogs and unders go to die. I have Air Force plus six against UNLV. They're going to overtime. Uh, that's where dogs go to die. Yeah, I have them plus six. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. That's un- <laughs> I was saying that was that's unfortunate. For no, me. I know, but you said that, and then like two seconds after you said it, ah. I got the notification that's going to overtime. Well, I didn't say that's where dogs go to die. I said that's where unders. Yeah, go but I always say that's where dogs yeah, and unders go. To die. You say both. Yeah, whatever. Okay, Will. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How have you been doing? I've been doing pretty good. Um, I think Sunday, you know, it finally clicked with me. I need to start gambling again. Yes. Because I, I'm i still a little bit under the weather. And so to counteract that, you know, I had two plays on Sunday, and I think I had three plays on Monday. Um, and I went three and two. But one of the winners on Sunday was plus 135. There you go. Absolute Not snipe by me. Not a big deal. Cracking money line against the Colorado Avalanche in Colorado. That is a good – that's a snipe. Listen, I saw Seattle. They're a good team. Colorado, they are injured. Mm. And they still need to figure out, figure out some lineup changes. And Seattle didn't really make any lineup changes at the, at the trade deadline. So, I thought, no, you know. they didn't make any. Yeah. So – They added L.A. Tolvin. Wasn't at the deadline. But. It's – that's – it's fine. It's fine. fine. It's we're fine. We're, we're fine. We're fine. So, I thought. I mean, Kraken, one of the best teams in the West, plus that, money. Though. I hate that. I do hate that, but I. I'm I saw. Happy, I'm I saw. Happy for yeah. you. I'm happy <laughs> that they're good, or I'm mad that they're good. Yeah, but I saw the value and I took it. There you go. And so I'm three and two. Um, I just tweeted out my picks for today. Uh. There were only three hockey games today, 
Uh, they all kind of suck, but I think the wild, while they're playing the Jets, I got the under in that one because the Jets have that's a hot like goalie. That's like the only one that's like decent. Yeah. And then I have the over in the Canucks Ducks game because it's the Canucks. Because it's the Canucks and they score, but they they can't get the puck out of the net. And so I don't know. I I think I feel really comfortable betting any Vancouver Canucks over. That's fair. I mean, so that was they weird. suck in the worst way possible. Yeah. Like yeah. or in the best in way, the best way in possible. the best way possible, excuse me. Um they could score goals, mm-hmm. no doubt, but they cannot – their goaltending is shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They cannot stop that puck from reaching those threads. Mm-hmm. They just can't do it. They can't. And I also placed a future. Uh-oh. Oh. Yeah. I placed a future on the Edmonton Oilers to win the Stanley Cup, plus 1,300. Okay. Okay. It's really good value. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, no. I mean, it's great value. Yeah. Listen, it's a really good value. The way I see it, the only thing that Edmonton is missing right now is the goaltending. And everything else, they added Ekholm at the trade deadline, and they kind of have everything except for, like, a hot goalie. If they can get a hot goalie, they can win the Stanley Cup. Connor McDavid is an absolute mutant right that now. That is true. Look he, at how many goals do you have right now? Fifty-four. Yeah, I I saw that notification that he, he scored fifty-four, and I was like, I have to place a future. I have to do this. This might be his year yeah, because he's going be. for the he's going for the Richard Rocket. Yeah. this year, which he's going to get by yeah, a mile. by a lot. <laughs> yeah, and so figured just threw a unit on it plus thirteen hundred, and yeah, we're seeing where that goes. Nice, but that's all of my gambling I news would, this week. As much as like I. I do not like the Oilers just franchise. Yeah. Well, ju- I don't – like, their storied franchise is fine. Like, it's it's a great franchise, but the way they run their teams, it's just abysmal. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's just not good. I'm just like, I don't really want to see these guys win a cup ever again. But if Connor McDavid does not get a cup, Tragedy. that will that – it is tragic. the most tragic thing that could happen in all of sports. Yeah. So I don't disagree with your decision. I think everybody should place a future on the Oilers to win, or whatever team Connor McDavid ends up being on <laughs> in the future, to win the Stanley Cup because he is He's going to get one eventually. Yeah. He has to. Yeah. He has to. The Whether NHL will rig it. Yeah, they will rig uh, it. If it gets to a certain point. I, th- I mean, shit, that might have been what they did for Ovechkin. Took him a while. Took him a while. Yeah. But they were like, hey, let's let's get this guy. Let's <laughs> throw him a bone. You yeah. said uh, he's going to win the Rocket Richard by a lot on the action 24-7 sportsbook. I was just curious. Mm-hmm. It's minus 10,000. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> minus 10,000. Like, Good value. <laughs> go. Oh, sorry, I can pull it. I no, got it right no, now. I got it. That's ten thousand dollars to win a hundred. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good value. I mean, <laughs> place your bets. Folks. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. You can invest in a Roth IRA. Or you can bet <laughs> Connor McDavid to win the Richard Rocket. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's. I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but um, I not. think you're pretty stupid if you don't bet. <laughs> Connor McDavid. There's not very many surefire things. He's he's ten goals ahead of um, David Pasternak, who is in second place. Yeah. Well, that's all I got going on. So, what do we want to what do we want to get into first? Do we want to talk more about college basketball, or I want to talk about a hot button issue in the NFL right now. Okay. What's that? It is Lamar Jackson. Mm Mm-hmm. Does this man deserve to be paid? Like, paid at all? Or paid what he's asking? Uh, yeah, but what, what he's asking. Like, I don't know. No. I, know he's, I, don't, I haven't heard an exact number, but from what I've heard, he's asking for Deshaun-esque He, he wants numbers. a fully guaranteed contract. No, nobody, nobody deserves that. I don't think so either, but 
Also, there have only been two unanimous MVPs in the National Football League. Mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson and Tom Brady. Yeah. And Tom Brady won MVP the year they traded Randy Moss to the Raiders. Yeah. And they went 14-2. and two. I mean, I get where he's coming from asking for that kind of money. Because it's like, oh, you gave it to Deshaun Watson, who hasn't played in two years, and it won't. Had some off the field issues. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but and he was just kind of average when he played the few games he did with the yeah, Browns. Yeah, I think he'll be good though. But, but yeah, like I get him asking for that, but nobody is worth that. And I think that's kind of what the NFL, or well, I guess that's what the NFL is saying because. How many teams have come out and said they're not interested? Like teams like, that need quarterbacks. Most of the them. commanders said they're not interested. In yeah. Them. Like the Jets are also not interested. They're going to get Rodgers. So probably. Probably. Panthers. The Dolphins. Not interested. The Dolphins. The Dolphins. Aren't interested. Not like, interested. Teams that need quarterbacks are not interested in doing this. Like that. There's a reason for that, and it's because I think all the smart NFL GMs and owners, other than the Browns and Cardinals, are like can't be paying these guys these much. Yeah. Especially the guys who have got them. Deshaun, we'll see. Kyler Murray sucks. I think Kyler Murray has the worst contract in the NFL. Oh, I think, yeah. By Him or Russell Wilson, but I think it's – Russell a Wilson, thing. I feel like, has the ability to come back. Kyler I Murray think so, I think so, too. But also, like, I – oh, my God. Who paid – who signed off on that Kyler Murray contract? Well, I mean, but that organization is not well run. That's not – yeah, I know. The, no, that's what I'm saying. It's know, like these piss poor organizations yeah, are the ones dealing out these contracts. Yeah, and, and it's like, what are you gonna do? Not pay him? I, I mean, I get, yeah, do yeah. it. Fucking don't I, pay him. I get the fa- like the fan outrage would be like um, almost astronomical if mm-hmm. they don't. But also, from a GM standpoint, you can just be like, okay, I can live with not paying this guy a shit ton of money when the Ravens have always been. Even like yeah. when they're like yeah. don't have like a star quarterback, they've always been like decent. Yeah. They'll figure it out. I'm not. I mean, they made the playoffs this year with, with mostly, Tyler Huntley. Yeah, like I mean, he's a Pro Bowler, but well, <laughs> 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 but no, I but like that. I think the organization that organization is smart, and they would be the ones to put their foot down. Like we're not doing this. We're I, not playing. Yeah, your, we're not playing games. We're not playing yeah. games that these dumbass. NFL GMs, other G, uh, GMs and owners and have done and all, ultimately just kind of set their franchises back. And also that's that's another thing I wanted to go into, which is what I was trying to segue into, is that I kind of like the decision not to sign Lamar Jackson to this humongous deal, yeah. even if he is a unanimous MVP. Um. You take up so much cap space. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna build a team. You like yeah, you have the star quarterback, but you can't build a team around. It would have to be that. with like guys on their rookie deals, essentially. Yeah, and like that and may, maybe like that one may, other guy that may get you to the playoffs, but like that's not might win a couple of games, but you're not gonna win a Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, that mm-hmm. might get you to the playoffs. Yeah, maybe de- to, depending on your division. And they play in. The best division, they play in the a most very competitive division they, in football. Yes, I understand the reasoning as to why these GMs are like putting their foot down. Mm-hmm. They're like, we I can't, it. we can't pay you like this much, and I do love it mm-hmm. because these dumbass organizations, like the Browns and the Cardinals, have absolutely ruined the quarterback market Mm -hmm. they have ruined it and it's the it's the it's the same thing with any position that gets overpaid Mm -hmm. when christian kurt got 72 million dollars to play for the jacksonville jaguars all these all these teams debo samuels aj brown dk dk metcalf were like hey what the hell? Yeah. I want I want more than that. It's like, yeah, you deserve more than that, mm-hmm. but we can't pay you more than that. Because Christian Kirk isn't worth seventy two million dollars. No, he's, he's a slot wide receiver re- three he's at He's a slot best. receiver. I like that we have this table so I can 
pound my fist now. But are you placing a live bet? Yes, right I now? am, Boston College. <laughs> <laughs> What was it, Chris? Boston College plus ten and a half. Okay. Who, who are they playing? Uh, North Carolina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also like this table so I can see what you're doing now <laughs> across the. I was listening. I know. <laughs> I, I figured you were, but I was also looking down and I was like, "Are you placing a fucking bet right now? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a show here. Yeah, it's a gambling show. Yeah, I can do both. Yeah. So, do you all have anything to add to? No. Lamar Jackson. Thing. I mean, I, mean, I think like, you. I think he will play for a team this year. I mean, yeah, the Ravens tagged him. They did, but he could potentially sit out and just be like, oh, I'm He'd hurt. He'd be a fool to do that. I know. But because, I mean, I feel like that's the main reason people aren't paying him. It's because he hasn't, like, yeah, he won unanimous, unanimous MVP. But he's. That was he played, three years he ago. played a full season since then? No, I, I know he yeah. hasn't the last two years. I don't think so. So, I'm just – and especially with, like, like yeah, he's developed more as a, po- a pocket passer, but he's still a running co- – like a mobile quarterback. That style doesn't really last – it's proven not to last long in the NFL anyway. Yeah. So, that compiled with – he's already had injuries in the f- his first four years in the league, four or five years in the league. Uh, I get it. Why you're not giving a guy just a blank check. And be like, yeah, just write in whatever. Yeah. I think – you're, I, I think you said it, you know, really profoundly there, but it it really does, you know, handcuff your franchise in the in the sense of like paying other people. Like you can't get good free agents, and if you want to be competitive, you know, drafting really well becomes you know, real a lot more important mm-hmm. than than it already is, um, and. Yeah, I don't know if there's really any quarterback that's worth that, except, you know, obviously like Patrick Mahomes. You know, he's but making he's, a he's boatload making, of – But he's making less money than Daniel Jones this year. That's – yeah. That blows my – I don't know, like, how – It's because he's, contracts, on a lo- he's on a longer deal. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, per year, Daniel per Jones Per year, is Daniel more. Jones is making more money than Patrick Mahomes. Hmm. <laughs> Daniel Jones is just, like, screwed. GMs like forever. Oh. Yeah, I I think all of these quarterbacks that are making 150 million dollars plus have screwed up mm-hmm. the entire market. It's like yeah, like Aaron Rodgers, give him 150 million dollars. Like I think he is totally deserved that. He is a great quarterback, and I'm not sure if he still is or will live up to his past, but he has proven himself to be a great quarterback. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Matthew Stafford, yeah, you won a ring, but you also lead the league in interceptions when you're not hurt. Yeah. Dak Prescott. You led the league in interceptions. Led and the he league was in hurt. interceptions last year. And he was hurt. And he was hurt. <laughs> and also, he's just eh. He's very, yeah. Yeah. He's just eh. <laughs> uh, Derek Carr just signed a $150 million deal with the Saints, who came out as front runners out of, out of nowhere, which I, I, I want to say. I thought that was hilarious. What? Uh, because oh. they wanted to trade him. The they Raiders wanted to, wanted to trade him to the Saints. Oh yeah. And then he was just like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I'm waving not, my I'm not no trade traded. clause yeah. or whatever. And then he just goes and signed with I the Saints. Love that. I love I, that. That's yeah. That is that is an all time just vindictive move. <laughs> yeah. That is just out of an organization that kind of like screwed you over. Yeah. And just wanted to kick you out. I I love that. Mm. I thought that was hilarious. But. Derek Carr, you are not worth one hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah, sorry. Um, who else? Matt Ryan, one hundred sixty million dollars. Well, he's on the like, he got. he's he's made over three hundred million dollars in his yeah. career. Well, on his new deal, he made he signed a one hundred sixty million four year deal. I think he's last been a, year. Uh, no, when he was still with the Cardinals or not the Cardinals, the Falcons. Birds confuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> stupid birds. Um, and then he got traded to the Colts. I think two years into his deal, did he get traded. Yeah, huh. yeah. They uh, traded yeah, him yeah. for a third round pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought he just signed with them. No, no. That's why I was, I was like, what? And then like, I think he's going to retire though. So I don't think it's. I thought he did retire. 
He's not officially retired yeah. yet, right? Oh, but um, okay. But yeah, he definitely wasn't worth what he produced last year. Um, <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. What What is Mahomes making this year? Uh, I don't know. Because I, I thought it was like a ten year, five hundred million dollar contract. Was it all like front loaded, or is I, it back loaded? I honestly don't remember. I think it might have been backloaded. That way they can just negotiate some other deal when Cause, that time comes. Because I remember there was a bunch of memes about how he's, he's he, making – he's going to be making half a billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what they signed him to, but he's he's fully guaranteed $140 mm-hmm. million. Mm. So he's, he's – a third of that yeah. is fully guaranteed, hmm. which isn't like a bad deal, I don't think. For, for Patrick Mahomes, that's not a bad deal. I mean, I think making a hundred million dollars doing anything ain't a bad deal. No, but We're I'll, just even, I'll even say this. I'll even say <laughs> this. Ryan commoners. Tannehill signed a four-year, one hundred and twenty million dollar deal. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, he was kind of the guy. Like when he came in, stepped up for Mariota, then he signed that deal, and it's like, yeah, we made the playoffs twice in those three years, but whoa, whoa. yeah. Slate, that's that's one hundred and twenty million dollars yeah. that is just gone. And I mean, the, yeah, mm-hmm. quarterbacks just make an outrageous and, amount. Of and money. it almost like makes me think that should like almost owners, if they want it, if they want a star quarterback, should they pay for it out of their own pocket? Like because <laughs> they 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 can't keep doing this the way that these yeah. deals keep going down with the cap. They can't keep the doing cap this. is going up over the next few years. I, I don't know how much. Yeah, it's it like it always goes up, yeah. but like that's it's but still like if you have Deshaun Watson making two hundred thirty million dollars a year, it's like, dude, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's getting what a bit doing? silly. It is yeah. like, yeah, it's getting a bit outrageous. It's like if you want these guys, I know it's not. It's kind of like if the owners like paid for it, it'd be like under the table, yeah. like kind of like yeah. shady deal, but like. <laughs> I think that, like, if they really want these players, that's almost what they're going to have to do. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's, there should almost be a separate quarterback cap than from the regular cap. That'd be wild. That'd be pretty wild. Um, but it is, it is kind of a a weird system. The salary cap, just from like a, like, you know, this guy makes this much. Well, I'm better than him. I need to mm-hmm. make more than him, and then. Well, yeah, that's that's and how then, everybody. That's how I know, I know. Yeah. And then five years later, it's like, well, that guy's making that. I need to make more than him. Yeah, and it's mm-hmm. just it just keeps building. And it just keeps going. It's like it's kind of like the Cardinals, where it's like we can't, we don't know if we can we afford to lose just lose him. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why they overpay, not because yeah. he's produced that much, because he, he hasn't. hasn't. Like he hasn't. Mm-hmm. They've been to the playoffs once, and they mm-hmm. lost. And they lost in the first round. Yeah. So. What do we do? <laughs> but that that's one of the most If anybody's watched this show when when sport. we were talking about the NFL like mid season, you just you know how much we do do not like Kyler Murray. I just yeah. 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 But he's just not worth two hundred and that's not his thirty million dollars. It's, it's the not Cardinals his fault. fault. It's, but I mean they're t- terrible organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but man, that got me so fired up. Like that, <laughs> that just gets me so angry. And it's just like, I don't blame you. I don't know. Like I know that these athletes, like they put their body on the line and they go out there every week. They commit their lives. They've committed their whole lives to doing this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from like childhood to now. They have, they have earned this spot, but. Part of me, and maybe it's just because I play like in a in a sports league for fun, but like, what kind of happened to just playing for fun? Yeah. What ha- what <laughs> like what what happened to just like not playing for the money? Uh, I don't think it's ever been like that, to be honest. Well, now I, it's easy to say that, but when someone waves two hundred something million dollars in front of your face like well i mean i I guess i'll take it yeah (laughs) but like when somebody that's a that's a different thing when somebody like waves it in front of you other than you asking for it but when you see an opportunity i should say to make 200 plus million dollars you're like holy shit that's yeah generational wealth yeah Yeah. 
I understand. Oh, I get. I also get where you're coming from. But I know, but that's that's not the way that professional athletes think, and I understand that. Yeah, because yeah. I'm professional. They because they are professional. Get paid, <laughs> and I play at ten thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I do think you know they kind of have to like love it. Oh, love you have to football love it. to be you know. to get paid that much money. You have to love it. Yeah, you can't just be like yeah, well I do it and get paid two hundred million. Uh-huh. You can do that and be in the league, but you won't get that much money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, is that the end? I, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Um, unless you'll have anything to add. I mean, nah. the just like all these deals just getting sillier and sillier. It's just, yeah. I see it and I'm like, geez. And, like, I know it's nowhere near, like, baseball, like he is. Yeah. Which is I don't a whole other thing we can, yeah. we can get into. We can do that closer to the season. Yeah, 45 days away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> closer than that. Isn't Pretty it? Sure. Pretty sure. Yeah, Reds have new days on the 23rd. Of March? Yeah. Oh. What did I see today? I don't know. That's, like. A lot less days than 45. It is. Yeah. It's a lot less. Days. I'm going to look it up just to be sure. But, yeah. I'm, it's like I'm, two weeks from I'm going to Red, I'm, I'm going to Red's opening day, so I'm pretty sure that's. It would be important to know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm dyslexic and saw the numbers wrong. I don't know. 54 days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe I just re-, re didn't recognize a number, which sounds... March 30th, excuse me. Which, okay. So, that's so. closer. So, no worries. 22 days. Yeah. <laughs> like half. Yeah. Like half of what I said. <laughs> it's close. Yeah. So... It's close enough. Yeah. Whatever. We can move on. <laughs> what do you all want to talk about next? <laughs> Did you say you wanted to talk about something? Um, I mean, yeah. Before we get into XFL gambling corner. Um, I, sh- I, you placed some futures or a future earlier, right? I placed a few mm-hmm. on college basketball on who's going to make the final four. And it's kind of boring. It's just big 12 and pac 12, but I have, fine. um, I can pull it up real quick. It's Baylor, Kansas, Arkansas, or Arkansas, Arizona, <laughs> and UCLA, mm-hmm. not parlayed, obviously. That would be insane. But just Old those death. four, one of the – yeah, that would be – then I'll hate myself <laughs> for not parlaying. <laughs> but, yeah, just half unis to – You always regret the bet you don't place. Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine being right here, like, sitting on the couch over there, and we're just watching, and then final basket goes in. All four of them make the final four. All four of them make the final four. And we, we me and you, we both look at Chris – and then Chris looks at us, and then we it's look like, at Chris. And then Chris goes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but he won four. He would win four bets. Four futures. Yeah. Which that's hard to do. That's kind of Yeah, I have Arizona plus 350, Kansas plus 190, Baylor plus 450, UCLA plus 300. I like the Baylor pick a lot. I do too. Um, I just think both of the, like, Baylor and Kansas, they're, the, in my opinion, the best teams in the Big 12, which yeah. is just – a gauntlet. Yeah. So they're the most battle tested. Kansas, I think, is the best team in the country. Obviously, they just won the national championship. But I just think those are the four best teams. UCLA might be the most underrated bit or top ten team of all time. They've won like seventeen games in a row or something crazy like that. Mm-hmm. And like, part they they might be a two seed. Yeah. Like that's insane. Yeah. Purdue is probably gonna be a one seed over. There. Probably. If if the way, I mean, as it, as the standing is now, who knows what's yeah. gonna happen in conference tournaments? True, but as it stands right now, Purdue could be a one seed, and they're kind of a joke. Purdue is like, I earlier in the season when I was like looking up stuff, and I was like, hey, Purdue is like playing this unranked opponent. They're number one, and they're like plus money. <laughs> and like, and they lost. And then Chris, you were like, um, I don't trust them. They're they're the what did you say? Like the they're always – I don't remember what I said exactly, but if – You called – oh, they were frauds. Yeah. They're frauds. They're always frauds. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know. They're number one. Like, they're the 
they're the top ranked team I in the country. Like were, and they, then like it was like they lost. They were plus money <laughs> against. This was when Indiana was unranked. It was right before Indiana went, yeah. on, went on a tear. And yeah, Indiana beat them by like seven. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. And I was I bet Purdue money line that night, and I was just like, well, this this is a lock. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I, they have Zach Eady, who's like eight feet tall, yeah. and that's it. But what I was trying to say is I I agree that I think Purdue is and they're probably gonna, pretty overrated, and they probably do not deserve to be. They deserve to be in it. Yeah, no, for sure. oh, no question. I but think like, they should be a two seed. Yeah, they, they don't need to be a UCLA one seed. Them and UCLA should swap, but, I mean, they're probably going to mow through their conference tournament because the Big Ten is a joke. Mm-hmm. They have, like, Indiana and, like, Maryland and Northwestern are decent. But yeah, the rest of it's terrible. But, yeah, Purdue's probably going to be one seed over UCLA, which makes no sense. Um, but, I don't know, like UCLA, Arizona is just Arizona. They're really fucking good. They're always really fucking good. Yeah. So, it's kind of the same thing with Kansas. So, I mean, in a field that's usually wide open, it's not fun to take chalk. Which I guess rock the chalk. Yeah, go Kansas. But um, <laughs> that's usually what happens uh-huh. when a field is wide open. It's like the the cream rises to the top eventually. You'll have your fun games in the middle, but like when it comes down to the games in late March and April, it's gonna be the the teams you know that are mm-hmm. there. They'll yeah. probably be a uh, fucking probably Purdue will go to the Final Four now that I talk shit They're, about them. But yeah, um, shout I out Macho Man. Yeah, I'm cream rises to the top. I was gonna say. Oh, that. I was like, did he go to Purdue? <laughs> <laughs> No, just a, a uh, famous. Yeah, okay, I got it now. But just that, I was like, "What?" I was also gonna say about Baylor. Um, I feel like whenever Baylor gets in, they all get, they they always make a run. They always mess around. They always just they all they're always just like fuck around and find out. They're kind like, of a slept on team this yeah. year because they did struggle in the like a lot of teams struggled in the Big Twelve. If you look at it from just like a record standpoint, like oh, this team lost like six games. They're like a one seed, but the Big Twelve has been a gone yeah like texas tech was probably the worst team and they were like they weren't good in conference play but they're a good team like they're they're not some it's not like lsu in the sec who just like rolls over and dies every week yeah but yeah those are my futures obviously i love them because i took them and um they're probably all four gonna hit because i didn't parlay them (laughs) the gambling gods gotta get their jabs in some way yeah, with you winning for futures. <laughs> that would be great. But there's always just – there's always something. So I wanted to ask, like, when you're, when you're doing research on college basketball, what what is, like, a stat that, like, pops out at you that you're like, oh, this is what I'm following, this is what I'm writing? I, because there's just so much, like, parody in college basketball. I look at kind of, like um, – and I would just say, I mean, covers.com has been a great tool for me. Uh, I, Same. Because they, they have, like, other uh, sites will give out, like, just how good a team is against the spread, like, on the season. Which is good. That's fine. But they'll give you – covers will give you a team – or, uh, like, how good a team is against the spread in this spot. They'll be like, oh, they're 0-6 in their last six on the road against teams with a record above 500. Or something like that. That's where it's like, oh, they're normally – like, on the season, they're really good against the spread. But historically, in this spot, it's a letdown. Or it's like they're whatever against the spread against after coming off a win. So it's like, oh, they they usually have a letdown. Yeah. So and they'll, they'll also do the same thing with the head-to-head matchups, mm-hmm. like in previous matchups. And I know that, like, these these teams don't play, like, four or five times a year, but it's still, like, something to look into. It's always – well, with college basketball, at least, on covers.com, it will say – uh, road team has covered the spread 13 of the last 14 times. Mm-hmm. Or it's like the favorite is four and six against the spread yeah. in the last 10 games. So, yeah, it's not like, that, like a full – I mean, gambling, there's no foolproof method to gambling. Yeah. But that's what I've been doing this year in college basketball, and this has been my most consistent year. So, mm-hmm. it doesn't – all you know, studying – I mean, going by trends – Obviously, is not always going to work, especially yeah. in college basketball. But it usually, like, there's a reason there a team is like that bad mm-hmm. ag- against the number or the over, or the under, whatever it is. Why that number hits in these spots? Yeah, it just that's just the way the team. And is. then uh, covers.com when you look at like the full slate, 
if you just go to the college basketball like page, mm. it'll say like it also have like percentages of the public. Oh yeah. On who's it on, mm. and then you can look at you can kind of like gauge that and you can that kind of catches your eye a little bit mm-hmm. and then you can and then on that same page it'll show you like their at home record and the away record and the against the spread record in the last 10 games and their against the spread record in the last 10 games and then if those two match up then I'll click on the matchup mm-hmm. and then I'll go into the more detailed um I will even like look at like their past like few games yeah oh not, yeah they have not all head to head they have yeah. all like 10 they have their last like 10 or whatever yeah their last yeah. 10 or 15 or whatever their whatever covers does on their thing and it'll show like oh they've covered the spread in the last five games mm-hmm. like in a row and then it's like it will say like it's like uh the kentucky wildcats are five and oh against the spread in their last five overall and it's like okay well i saw that, that. that's yeah they have yeah. that but they yeah. also have a lot more detail they have a lot more detail and and then i'll like well once i once something catches my eye on the main page i'll go in and i'll look into the more in-depth like stats it takes like it doesn't take a lot of time to do but it takes like enough see i don't i just click on every game oh really yeah that's why Saturdays, and I click on, or like on the main Saturdays, I would click on every single game on Friday night, and that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> takes a lot out of yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine it's like two and a half hours of just staring at fucking numbers. <laughs> I usually try and start with like the ranked games because I know those are the games that are going to be more accessible. Yeah, to me, and they're more likely to be like on TV yeah. or mm-hmm. on Twitter or <clears> something I can like follow. Yeah. Like where I can find it on uh, the score very easily without having to like search for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's mainly how I do my college basketball as well. Um, it's a lot of like in depth stuff. Re- it's it is research, but like somebody is is doing it for me. Essentially. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm not gonna like. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna do it myself. Yeah, who's got that kind of time? Yeah. <laughs> Those guys that make the site have that kind of time. Exactly. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> yeah. That's why these sites exist. Yeah. And it's great. Okay. Because I was trying to do some research last night, and I was just like, I don't know what to – I wasn't on there. but mm. I mean, and also, like, over the course of the season watching and betting, you get, like, a sense for certain teams. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's – like, ultimately it comes down to your gut. Mm. So yeah. if, like, it was like, oh, this team has – like, the beginning of the season I was fading Notre Dame – and uh, Florida State, just I don't care what the number is, I don't care who they're playing, fading, fading both of those teams, and it ultimately worked out. Obviously, as the season goes on, the trends buck, so I kind of got off of them. But um, and then like towards the end, I was riding Pitt every week, or every almost every week, and then they kind of fell off. So, but so it's a mix of both, like mm-hmm. looking at the numbers and just you follow your own trends as well. Yeah, of course, it's like you know, like obviously, like. You have to watch and learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of the over the course of the season. I mean, ultimately, said, yeah, that's yeah. the best way to do it. But yeah. I mean, I don't have time to watch fucking every single game. Yeah. yeah. Nor do I have the ability. Yeah. To do that. And it's just to. like I don't know. I don't understand how you get these stats on Weber State. Weber State. Yeah. Like they're I've never just, heard of that in my life. Well, they're like, just there. I mean, they're, they're on the page. Yeah. And that's. I bet on <laughs> they. They've been good to me this year. And that, that's why I asked <laughs> what about what about this. Yeah. So. Yeah, a little gambling advice for everybody really out there. I mean, mm-hmm. that's how we do it. That's how it's we like go seven and zero. Oh, like oh. That's also how we go zero oh and six. Yeah, it uh, happens, man. It happens. That's why it's called it gambling happens. and not yeah. winning something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's called gambling and not a guaranteed sure thing. All right. Well, now that we're done talking about the stuff we talked about, <laughs> I can say. <laughs> After we're done talking. After we're done talking. <laughs> now it's time for Chris's XFL Gambling Corner. Chris, how did you do last week? Uh, another three in one day. Um, wow. I mean, or three in one week. <sighs> it's Man, don't miss. I mean, I said it last week. I might be the hottest XFL gambler on the planet because there's probably not that many of us. Probably not. But, um, yeah, I'm seven and three since I started giving out picks. For the XFL. 
I mean, you can't stop. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> also, we need this segment. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also it helps that I've been doing well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll get into this slate. Um, we're starting off with oh, a yucky one because it's the Houston Roughnecks, best team in the league. My Houston Roughnecks, <laughs> minus eight and a half against. One of the worst football teams ever assembled in the Orlando Guardians. Uh, Will point, pointed this out to me before the show. The Houston Roughnecks, as an XFL team, whether it be in the 2020 version or this version, have never lost a football game. What? Yep. They, <laughs> what? <laughs> they, they never went, lost. They went 5-0 and oh in the 2020 season because before of COVID. Disbanded. Shut it down. Yeah. And then they're 3-0 and oh now. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Hottest, I knew. hottest team to ever exist. <laughs> I mean, so far. So far. And they're playing, again, just the piss-poor Orlando Guardians. I feel bad for them at this point. They had a they had a, a bit of a scandal yeah, over the week. Yeah, I saw that week. with the – Did Paul, you see that? No. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, they had a quarterback by the name of Quentin Dormady, uh, Tennessee Volunteers legend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw that. He <laughs> was kicked off the team and I think just kind of blackballed from the league because they wiped his stats and everything from the website um, for giving the pl- giving away plays to the other team. <laughs> I forget who they were playing. But, like, it's the – like, why are you doing that in the XFL? Like, what? Just download them off the internet. They're probably there. <laughs> it's probably in Madden somewhere. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> – But um, it's – I mean – how do you not go with the team that's never lost? Minus eight and a half. Uh, yeah. These two teams played earlier in the year. Uh, the you mean like two weeks ago? The week one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Guardians won 30 – or the Guardians. The Roughnecks won 33 to 11. Yeah. So, minus eight and a half feels kind of easy. Okay. Um, then we're going to go to what could be probably the game of the week, and unfortunately this starts at 9 o'clock Central on Saturday, the Brahmas and the Sea Dragons. Sea Dragons are minus four and a half. I don't really understand why, if I'm being perfectly honest. They do probably have the most prolific offense in the league, but they've only won one game. I don't get it. Thanks to uh, Titans legend, Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon. Yeah, Titans legend. <laughs> so, the Brahmas are actually a pretty decent football team. I think, I'm pretty sure they're 2-1, but I don't know. But um, I'm going Brahmas plus four and a half just because I don't think the Sea Dragons, they won one game. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. They could win this game, but four and a half seems a little too rich for my blood. Then we're going to go Sunday, the first game, Arlington Renegades versus the St. Louis Battlehawks. Battlehawks are minus four. Um, the Renegades coming into the season were supposed to be pretty good. I don't think they're very good at all. Yeah. They just beat – they played the Orlando Guardians on Sunday or Saturday, one of the two. They won 10-9. to nine. Yeah, I had the under in that game. Oh, nice. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but the what was the under, 21? Uh, it was probably it was like 36 <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> but I just don't think they're very good. And I think the Battle Hawks are pretty good. A.J. McCarron, we touched on him last week. He's having fun. He likes being here. They lost last week but they're playing the defenders who are probably the most well-rounded team in the league. So bounce back week, Battle Hawks minus four. Love it. And then to cap it all off, we got the D.C. defenders hosting the Vegas Vipers. D.C. defenders, like I just said, probably the most well-rounded team in the league. Um, they're, I'll take a minus six against the Vipers who suck. Um, they're just bad. Hey, where do, the, do you know where the Vipers play? Like the arena or yeah. the stadium? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't play in the Raiders. No, stadium. God, no. I think they play in the UNLV stadium. Oh, okay. I might be wrong. Actually, let me look that. It it looks pretty bad. I don't know if you saw that clip. I don't think so. Oh, there was a clip. I think it was from week two where um, a kicker for Vegas was lined up. And it was raining and shit, but he kicked it and he just slipped. Like, he kicked it and ah. fell on his ass. Mm, I can relate. So, <laughs> yeah. Did he make it? No. But <laughs> would have been cool if you made. I was like, "That's guy should be a piss poor field if that's yeah, happening." Probably. Uh, but hold on, Vegas Vipers Stadium, Cashman Field. That looks like a baseball stadium. Oh Christ! What in the Is 
think it's a joke. They can't even play where UNLV play. Yeah, they can't go to the local college. Cashman Field. Uh, if this is a high school, I'm going to shit. <laughs> they shouldn't play in high schools. Should they? I don't know. Oh, I think. Some of those high schools in Texas. Yeah, for sure. They, I mean, I'm not saying Vegas has high school stadiums like that, but some of the high school stadiums in Texas are absolutely bonkers. Yeah. They're insane. High school football is like – It's a religion. Yeah. Yeah. In some of those, like, smaller towns. Mm-hmm. Well, even, like, the bigger towns. But where, where football is life. Yeah. Like, small town college – or high school football mm-hmm. is so life. it looks like it was built – as a baseball stadium, but it's played, it's been home to um, multiple baseball uh, teams. The Oakland Athletics played six games there in 1996. Not sure what that was about. (laughs) It's currently home to the Las Vegas Lights of the USLC, which is soccer, Uh and the Vegas Vipers. Hmm. It's, I'll show you a picture. It's just, Kind of a square. Yeah, it is just kind of a square. Huh. Yeah. It's very well. It's like you look it's a at very square field. You look at it. It's <laughs> like it has like the stands of a baseball field, but it's yeah, could be anything. Yeah, and I guess it could be. It can hold soccer and football and whatever the hell else. Hmm. So um, interesting. It's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't look great. No, it looks pretty. Bad. I yeah. saw them play a game there, and I remember watching. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like. Walls where, the people where on things the other side? shouldn't be walls. It was very <laughs> weird. But, yeah, they the, the Vipers aren't very good. I'll take the best team in, in the league by touchdown. All right. So, that's Chris's XFL gambling corner. Uh, if we you're expect not, you back here for another three in one week. I uh, <laughs> Hopefully, we'll go four and oh. Hopefully. I haven't had that yet, so. But, but you've just, done nothing less than three and one. So oh, I went, I went one and one my first week. That was week one. I was just testing the water. But since I've actually started, like, trying, mm-hmm. yeah, three and one. Ever back since back you weeks. said to yourself, I'm betting every XFL game. Yeah. <laughs> Most I got you. degenerate sentence I've ever I got spoken. You. It's okay. Well, we, need a, we need a segment on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Your sacrifice is our reward. If, I say, if this starts to go to shit, I'm going to have some problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to keep going. It's like, you got to keep going. It's like, man, I'm 0-12. It's well, like, I don't, I don't give care. a shit. <laughs> got the segment <laughs> yeah but uh yeah four picks four winners all right right on that's so gonna be it for us yep. yep um the tournament is next week what right first four is on the 14th yeah no. today is the the eighth the eighth that is next week Shit. yeah yep. okay sorry yeah. bad at math so <laughs> tournament's next week and we might see if we can get out a pod on Thursday okay, Ooh. for everyone because we're going to try and, you know, preview the tournament. We're going to do our brackets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we could probably just do one without knowing the last. Do you want to do a competition? Yeah, 100%. Who has the best bracket? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Somebody sure. Has to do something. <laughs> what's the, what's the I, loser? I don't Sorry, know, I'm just coming up with it on the spot. Loser has to. Loser has to bet the XFL for the rest <laughs> of the year. <laughs> well, what, what motivation do I have? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we, we could do something like the winner decides the punishment. So it's tailor made to the loser. Mm, and then the middleman gets nothing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the middleman is just there. Yeah. <laughs> just had a good time. <laughs> yeah, they, just, a competition. they just had a great time. <laughs> That'll be good for me, who doesn't follow college basketball. Uh, <laughs> I've been in enough bracket groups to know you don't have to know dick about college basketball yeah. to win it. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm down for that. Um, we don't have we'll to come do up with the punishment next week. We should definitely do, yeah, competition. Yeah. Okay. Tight. Well, that's going to be it for us this week. Let's um, go. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you listen to this or watch this, please like, please comment, please subscribe. It really helps us out if you interact with this in, in any way. Uh, it really helps us out. Um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Sean, what is the promo code? Promo code, as always, is MONEY3. 
M-O-N-E-Y-3. When you use the code MONEY3 on the Action 24-7 Sportsbook, you will receive a $250 risk-free bet on your first bet. New customers only. Terms and conditions apply. We'll see you next week. That's right. We'll see you next week. There's three of us. Now let's make some money.